does the average American consume? Um, my guess is they're around 10 grams a day. Wow. So it's pretty low. And a lot of that comes from all of the processed foods that we see on the market, mm -hmm. the refined sugars, the refined flours. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, it's an amazing thing. And so what you mean by refined, that would be like regular white flour mm -hmm. as opposed to the whole wheat flour. Right. Now, we need roughly 30, 35 grams of, of fiber. What does that mean? Um, every food has a certain amount of grams per serving. Mm -hmm. So for instance, a slice of bread could have zero okay. or could have, have up to five or eight grams depending on what bread you're choosing. Okay. All of our labels are listing fiber now, so it's a wonderful resource for mm -hmm. all of us to be able to read labels and be able to see how much fiber is in that food. If we pick foods that are fresher, that are less processed, we'll get more fiber in our diet. If you eat lots of fruits and vegetables um, with the skins on them, you'll have more fiber in your diet. Mm -hmm. um, the foods that are not refined, the breads that are whole grains, mm -hmm. The brown rice, as you explained, the wheat pastas. There's a lot more fiber on the market these days than there ever used to be. And I think that a lot of the companies are now realizing that. You'll notice they're adding fiber to yogurt now. So Interesting. Mm -hmm. So if we buy perhaps the bulk of our food from the produce section of the store, these fresh and eat the peelings and you know that sort of thing, that it's a, it's a healthy choice. Fiber is excellent for lots of reasons. One, it will lower your cholesterol because it binds bile, which is very cholesterol rich. And so in a high fiber diet, you will lower your risk for heart disease, for stroke, uh, for any of the vascular disease that you have just from lowering your cholesterol. Mm -hmm. It will also lower your risk for appendicitis, for diverticulosis, for hemorrhoids, a lot of problems. But as Stephanie mentioned, if you jump from low fiber to high fiber in one week or in one day, right. you're going to have more gas. Okay. That will ameliorate itself over time. Uh, so that's not a problem long term, but I would recommend that you increase your fiber more gradually over several weeks time if you're going to do that. Uh, it will also lower blood pressure to some extent. Mm. Uh, so fiber is an excellent uh, thing to in include in, in your diet. People with high fiber diets don't have the problems with constipation uh, as well. And uh, that's very, very important. Very good. You gave the, the example earlier about orange juice compared to an orange and how the orange juice would raise your blood sugar more quickly and higher than eating the orange. Is that related to the fiber content Absolutely. in the orange? Absolutely. It's related to the fiber content and also the packaging. If you look at an orange uh, and you peel it, you can peel it off. You have the sections there. There's fiber around the sections. But if you break a section open, you'll see that the juice is contained in tiny little globules. Mm -hmm. And when you chew that, you don't chew it as finely as your juicer juices it. Mm -hmm. That slows the sugar absorption down too because you have to digest that capsule mm -hmm. before you can actually uh, absorb the sugar from it. Mm. So eating an orange is much better for you than drinking orange juice mm -hmm. because we know from many studies that high glycemic diets cause many problems including diabetes. You mm -hmm. get shoved toward that mm -hmm. and uh, problems with cardiovascular disease because high uh, blood sugars uh, accelerates atherosclerosis. So eating our food naturally is much better. So I assume that would that would carry across the continuum that it's better to eat the fruit than it is to juice. drink the juice. And if you think of what a portion size of juice is, it's only four ounces. Really? It's smaller than this. This is probably an eight ounce glass. It's about half that. And you think about how full you get from eating an orange versus drinking four ounces of juice. And that's what a lot of times I recommend to my clients is eat the whole fruit. You're going to feel fuller longer mm -hmm. rather than just that little squirt of juice mm -hmm. that's not going to fill you up very much. Mm -hmm. And it seems that nationally there's there's a lot of constipation in our society. So if we're eating the fruit, if we're getting more fiber in our diet, um, then it then it will help with that. Mm -hmm. with that also, well. you want to make sure you drink lots of water. You know, if you're if you're eating lots of fiber, you're going to need that water in your gut to kind of move things along. So you are from Parkview. <laughs> <laughs> you do want to drink water. That's true because if you just had, for instance, you say, "Well, I'm going to go on a fiber kick and I'm going to eat." bran, just wheat bran, and so you just dump that on dry, 
that's going to not help prevent constipation. That can cause constipation because it blocks things up. It becomes almost like concrete. Whereas if you drink enough water with that, it keeps the fiber soft and it actually absorbs water and keeps the bowels moving. So if you do increase your fiber and you're getting it from a dry source, uh, grains for instance, you must increase your water intake to prevent problems. Interesting. Uh, if I have patients that have problems with continence, uh, they're losing control of their bowels, often I'll add a fiber in there and that will solidify the bowel movement and help prevent leakage. Mm -hmm. So fiber not only prevents constipation, but it can also prevent problems with the other end of the spectrum as well. Interesting. So uh, diabetes is rampant. This whole conversation is very much applicable to diabetes, probably the prevention, but as well as the treatment of? Yes. Mm -hmm. Diabetes is, um, an ama it's amazing how many people are becoming diagnosed with diabetes. Children now are being diagnosed with type 2 diabetes. Mm -hmm. a, a lot of it stems from obesity, lack of exercise, mm -hmm. the type of foods we eat. Um, and just 5 to 10 percent of weight loss can help that diabetes. It can really help reduce that risk of diabetes. It can also help someone come go from medications to no medications. So this weight loss information is wonderful for anybody with diabetes. Very good. Just adding fiber to the diet will lower your blood sugar. I had a patient mm -hmm. once who didn't want to take any medication. She was pregnant. She had diabetes, mm -hmm. and she refused to take medicines. I said, well, okay, we'll just give you a half cup of, bran of uh, wheat bran with every meal. Mm -hmm. Now, I wouldn't want to do that. Uh, mm -hmm. That's a lot of fiber, but she religiously did that, a half cup of wheat bran with every meal, and her sugars were normal just wow. from that because it slows the absorption of the sugar. And if you slow the absorption of the sugar from the gut into the blood, mm -hmm. the body has time to get rid of the sugar so you don't get the diabetes.